I'm 37 now. I started my original weight loss journey when I was 19 and it ended after I was well over 20. And, and because I started out fat and I gained something like 90 pounds my first year after I graduated high school. I went from, for me, a normal meal was to go to McDonald's and get a double bacon cheeseburger, maybe an extra Big Mac on the side, a Biggie fries, and a big Dr. Pepper, a Biggie Dr. Pepper. And it, well, that wasn't enough. I always got extra food on the side, you know, something else with it. Maybe some McNuggets or an extra burger on the side. And to me, that was a typical meal. It was, tip it was typical for me to order a large stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut and then drown it down with a two liter bottle of Dr. Pepper. I started running every day. I did a few body weight exercises, but I initially started with just running in that first day. It was in the middle of a Texas summer. So it was something like 100 degrees outside Fahrenheit, which is around 40 degrees Celsius. And I got up and I just ran down the road as far as I could go. I made it about 100 yards before I collapsed on the ground, panting and out of breath with my sides hurting and my legs burning. And I had to lay there about five minutes before I could get up and walk home. We'll call it a hunter. I was a hunter of exotic game, if that will make you guys feel better. And a pretty good chunk of the game that I hunted was a very dangerous type of game that did some sort of masonry or bricklaying because they stacked bricks of some type up. All right, so let's go back and look at timelines a little bit. I'm turning 40 years old this year. I was... 18 at the end of 1994. I turned 18 in 1994. President Clinton became president in 93. So my young adulthood was during the Clinton years, during the Clinton administration. So President Clinton was the president from the time I was 17 all the way until I was 25. So yes, I became a man at the start of the Clinton presidency. I was scouted out for certain types of work before I even finished high school. Again, due to my family, my upbringing, connections certain members of my families might have had along with my shooting skills. Again, I was shooting very successfully at a thousand yards as a teenager, well before I was an adult, in actual competitions. So it isn't far-fetched that I may have been offered certain types of employment at that point. There were no veterans, logistically speaking. Where were people going to get veterans to do the massive amount of exotic game hunting and similar work that was being done. Look what was going on in this country during the Clinton years. We were in the middle of the drug wars, or some people like to call them the powder wars. There was massive fighting all through Mexico, Central America, dealing with drug cartels, uh, everyone from the DEA trying to crack down on them. There was an enormous amount of mercenaries being hired to do various work. And there weren't enough veterans, not even close to enough veterans, to do all of those jobs. We didn't have young, skilled veterans during that day. They just weren't there. They didn't exist in any sort of meaningful number. So yes, people with any of the right backgrounds who could be trained, who had aptitudes, were recruited to do this sort of work who had no military experience. Large numbers of them were. I met large numbers of men with no military experience, young men who just had certain aptitudes and skill sets or the right connections that got trained up to do this sort of work. And it wasn't full-time jobs. These were off and on things, a weekend here, a week there, a couple weeks here, a couple weeks there, in and out of the country. And men weren't even always paid cash because the truth was this was a very competitive market, a competitive environment. It was very dangerous. And there were other things worth more than money for people who wanted to stay in this line of work. Training and hardware. Those things were worth their weight in gold. There were times because of the lack of getting enough training and needing access to newer tactics, newer skills, things that were being learned and pushed out there that a lot of guys would do jobs and work for free and it be paid by having access to certain training facilities from time to time, meaning they would go do a job and maybe be allowed and be trained at a certain facility for two weeks. Or they would be given access to hardware that they couldn't easily buy themselves. They couldn't just go buy it in normal gun shops and equipment and things and armor and weaponry 
and equipment that was very difficult to get that they would sometimes do jobs in exchange for hardware to improve their operational capacity to improve their ability to make money and when it comes to military grade hardware and access to training facilities nobody has deeper pockets than uncle sam and during the clinton years they had very deep pockets when it came to that sort of thing And the beautiful part, all of these young men were completely disposable. Completely disposable assets at the end of the day. We got worked, we got worked hard, and sometimes we got broken. And since none of these men were members of the military, none of us were members of government agencies, we had no VA benefits, we had no access to resources when things went wrong because everything was done clandestinely. Latibre factum. And yeah, a lot of these men broke. I watched a lot of guys that I knew, a lot of guys that I had become friends with, either die in the field, kill themselves either at their own hand or supposed suicides, or just be disposed of and disappear. Because at the end of the day, we were all disposable and we became a liability we could just be thrown away like garbage. But I'm one of the lucky ones and I survived. So, those of you who don't believe any of this, that's okay, I really don't give a fuck. I'm still telling my story. This is, this is what it is. And if you don't believe me, fuck you, go fuck yourself, I don't care. For all these guys who are veterans who are standing there still screaming about your valor, stolen valor after what I just told you, that that sounds like I'm stealing any of your valor, you know what? Fuck you, kid. You can go fuck yourself. I don't really care what you think. But I will tell you this. If you decide that you're going to come confront me physically about it, you better not be a fucking pog. You better be a stone cold killer. If you come at me aggressively, voice raised, negative body language, as someone who I know is a trained killer. Because I don't flinch anymore when I hear a rifle round come by my head. When I hear that whoop and that snap of that sonic boom, I haven't flinched in 20 years from that shit. I got over that a long time ago. So if you come at me, I want you to know, son, it's not going to be me who goes in the ground. I'm still here. I'm still upright and drawing air. The 45's actually shot good. To give you guys an idea, I mean, I'm, I'm not amazingly in practice. Everything shot to the left. And I need to figure out if that's me or the firearm. This target was four magazines. So this one was out of the Gen 3 SF. Uh, they grouped decent. 